If I draw a picture of a positive charge, we know that there's an electric field that surrounds that positive charge. In fact, a field that's caused by that positive charge. Can you tell me what direction that field is? Does it point towards or away from that producer? It's going to point away from the producer. Uh, can anybody explain to me why it points away from the producer or how we know that it points away from the producer? Logan? Good. Uh, we define the direction of the field as the way that a positive experience or a positive test charge would move if placed in the field. And if we put one right here, it's going to be repelled by that producer, which means it's going to go away from it, which means the field has to be away from it. What happens, Logan, if I put a negative charge in that field? Which way is it going to go? It would be attracted towards it. Does that mean that we have a field that points in the opposite direction now? Points towards it? No. Nope still points away from it because we still define the direction of the field as the way that a positive test charge would move, whether or not we actually have a positive test charge there. Uh, let's say now that we have a negative producer. The field lines surrounding the negative producer are going to point towards it. Good. It's going to point towards it because, once again, if I put a positive experiencer or a positive <coughs> test charge in that field, it's going to this time move towards the producer. Put a positive there or a negative there, I should say, it's going to go away from it, but it doesn't really matter which way the negative goes because that's not the way we define the direction of the field. Let's say that we've got an electric field that points this way, a single electric field line that points this way. Let's say that I put a positive charge in that electric field line or in that electric field. Which way is that positive charge going to go? Assuming that that positive charge is free to move, Right, it's not a proton within a solid that can't go anywhere. Okay, assuming it's a positively charged ion or an object or, or whatever, where is that positive going to go? No. It's going to go with the field. Right? If it's a positive, it's going to go in the direction of the field, which is down and to the right. If I put a negative in there, which way is that one going to go? It's going to go opposite to the direction of the field, even though we don't know what caused this field. It could have been a positive up in the top left hand corner, or it could have been a negative down in the bottom right corner, or it could have been both a positive and a negative that caused this field. It doesn't matter. Positives move with the field, negatives move against the field. We learned two equations for the electric field last week. First one, kq over r squared, and the second one, e is equal to f over q. Can you explain to me the difference between those two equations, please? One's for the producer and one's for the experiencer. They're both valid. Okay, if you have a problem where you're trying to find the, the, the electric field, these are both valid equations. The one you use will depend upon what you have more information for. If you have information about the, the producer, then let's use the producer equation. If you have more information about the experiencer, then let's use the experiencer equation. Which one is the producer? Which one is the experiencer? The top one is the producer, good, and the bottom one is the experiencer. What does Q stand for up here in the top one? The charge of the producer. And what does Q stand for down here? The charge of the experiencer. What does F stand for? The what, sorry? The charge given on the experiencer? No, how about the force? Yeah, the force on the experiencer or the force felt by, the force experienced by the experiencer. Right? Uh, what units are we going to have Q in? Q ohms, good. And what units are we going to have R in? Meters. It's pretty common to have different units for those, right? We saw in our two Q ohms law quizzes, Friday and today, our one-dimensional and our two-dimensional, we saw where we had to convert Q ohms to Q ohms, and we found we had to convert to meters as well. So be aware of that, be alert for that, and let's make sure that we don't make a silly mistake based on some simple little unit conversion. All right, good. What I'd like you to do right now, please, is uh, take a look at a couple multiple choice questions. The first one being multiple choice number 50. It's in your multiple choice booklet, which you're going to submit to me as multiple choice number one, please. Right, we've got 18 responses here. Uh, 15 of you said D, and three of you said A, uh, which is a little bit puzzling because D and A both have different numbers and different directions. So let's take a look at what's the correct answer. I assume that it would be D. Uh, when we calculate 
the, the uh, intensity of the electric field produced by an alpha particle, we're going to say it's kq over r squared. That's 8.99 times 10 to the 9 times the charge of an alpha particle, which on your data sheet it says 2e, 2 times the elementary charge. That becomes 3.2 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. Divide that by the distance, that's going to be 5.0 times 10 to the minus 11. We can't forget to square that. When we do, I think we end up getting 1.2 times 10 to the 12 newtons per coulomb. Is that correct? Yes? Now, where does A come about here? Is that if we make it 1.6? No. Where does 5.8 come? Somebody who, somebody who said A, uh, where did you get the 5.8? All right, yes, it is going to be if you make the charge 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, which means, of course, check your data sheet. Okay, you see something that's not a normal particle, you're not used to using an alpha particle, what should you do with that? Draw attention to it, right? Circle it in red or highlight it or something to draw attention to it to remind yourself that it's not a particle that we typically use, at least not yet, and therefore, uh, we got to check the charge, we got to look up the charge, make sure we don't mess up on that. Now, the other thing is which way is the electric field? Sometimes the easiest thing to do is to draw it out. The alpha particle is a positive charge. If it's a positive charge, then the electric field would go away from it. Now, I see exactly why people said A here now. They said it's 5.8 because they made the charge 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. They didn't mix up the, so the charge, though, of the alpha particle. What they did is didn't read the question carefully and thought it was an electron. Because if it was an electron, then the field would be 5.8, and the field would be towards it. So read the question carefully, know what the particle is, and don't say it's going to be an electron when it isn't an electron. All right? Let's take a look at one more, please. Page 51, also in your multiple choice sheet. Uh, you can fill this in, please, as multiple choice number one as well. All right, everyone, let's take a look here. Um, we have uh, pretty much 50-50, <coughs> choosing C versus D. Now, clearly there's one right answer. Here's what I'd like you to do, actually, on this question, since it's about 50-50. I want you to find somebody nearby you that has the other answer. If you have C, I want you to find someone that has D. If you have D, I want you to find someone that has C. It doesn't matter who it is. And then I want you to together find the right answer. Got it? Got it, guys? Together find the right answer. Now, once you think you've got the right answer between the two of you, argue, right? Debate this. Try to convince the other person that you have the right answer. Once you have the right answer, then what I would like you to do is one of the two of you submit your new answer as multiple choice number two. Okay? So once you've arrived at consensus, one of the two of you, you both don't need to submit this, but one of the two of you submit it as multiple choice number two. Got it? All right, everyone, let's take a look at this question now. Uh, it says, by the way, we seem to agree now that the answer is D. Let's take a look at it just to make sure, though. It says the magnitude of an electric field at a distance x from point charge q is 8.3 times 10 to the 4 newtons per coulomb. If the distance is increased to 3x and the charge is reduced to q over 4, what's the magnitude of the electric field? Uh, our original electric field is uh, kq over r squared, and its value is 8.3 times 10 to the minus 4 newtons per coulomb. Our new value for electric field is going to be k times 1 quarter q. Now, somebody said to me earlier, could we just make that put the 4 on the bottom? Yes, we could. The danger of that is that you might go to square the 4. Okay? It's correct, but if you go and square the 4, then obviously it becomes incorrect. Okay, we're going to square R. We're going to square the distance that separates them. The distance is now uh, 3 times what it was before. So it becomes 1 quarter over 9. 3 squared is 9 times K times Q over R squared. 1 quarter over 9 is 1 over 36 times kq over r squared, which is 8.3 times 10 to the minus 4. 
8.3 divided by 36, I believe, is D. 2.3 times 10 to the negative 5. Is that correct? I'm sorry? How did I get there? How did I get here? Um, do you see the 1 over 9, 1 over 4 divided by 9 is 1 over 36? Okay, here's, here's how we're going to do that. Literally on your calculator, literally on your calculator, is that is there a mistake there? Yeah, yeah. It's just confusing because you add the K in on the formula and put one for it. Well, I put, the, I put the K in the formula because K is part of the formula. So I think it would be more, personally, I think it would be more confusing if I did this. Because that's not the equation. Right? So um, even, though the K, even though the K doesn't come into play there, Dane, uh, that's part of the equation. Now, if you did it without the K, then you're still going to get the right answer there because it doesn't come into play here. You're not changing the value of K. But in the end, here, uh, there's been a lot of those questions where, you know, even back to the beginning of the year when we did it with momentum, we tripled the value of M. Well, if we tripled the value of M, we didn't just leave off V. You know, we said my original momentum was M times V. My new momentum was... 3m times v if we tripled the mass, right? We didn't just leave off the v because the v didn't change. Okay, the k hasn't changed here. We're not just leaving it off because the k hasn't changed. Does that make sense? Uh, I, think it's, I, I think it's good to put that k in there because I think you're going to get more confused in the end if you, just, if you leave it off and just go q over r squared. It's going to be an unrecognizable formula for you. All right, so uh, Lorraine, if you're having trouble with that, literally just do it on your calculator. Go 1 over 4 equals, and then divide that by 9 equals, and you're going to get a decimal number. You're not going to get 1 over 36. Um, whatever. It's a decimal number. It doesn't really matter. Multiply it by 8.3, and you should get the right answer. Good? All right. Uh, we're not going to quite get covered what I had hoped to cover today. That's okay. Uh, instead, we will actually do one more multiple choice question because that's about the time we have here. So let's take a look at one more here. Let's make it multiple choice number 52. And if you can get that done within the next four minutes, let's submit it as multiple choice number one, please. All right, everyone, we're going to take a look at this here now. We've got six responses. Six people chose D. Six out of six. It's unanimous for those people who have, who have committed to something, at least here. Uh, zero newtons per coulomb. How can we have zero here? Well, we have four charges, and we're trying to find the net field at point P. Uh, I heard a couple people debating this, talking about this. Three and four end up canceling. Three produces a field to the right. Four produces a field to the left. Because it's the same distance from three to P as from four to P, and the charges three and four are the same, these two things are going to cancel each other out. They disappear. So there is no effect of charge, charge three and charge two. The only thing we have to worry about now is charge two and charge one. Now, charge 2 is going to produce a field this way, away from it, because it's a positive, a positive producer. We'll call that E2. Q1 is going to produce a field up this way. We'll call that E1. It's toward charge 1. Now, if those two values happen to be the same thing, then that's great. They do cancel out. If they don't happen to be the same thing, then they don't cancel out. Just give me two seconds here, okay, guys? If we say E is equal to KQ over R squared... Um, we can solve for the electric field of both of them. You can do that, and when you do, you find that the value ends up being the same, which means those things are going to cancel out as well, which gives you a net electric field of zero. Now, the other way to do it is to do a variable value changing thing here. Anybody do that? Yes? All right. Do a variable value changing thing there, and you'll find that it ends up canceling each other out as well. All right? Have a good night, everyone. And we'll see you tomorrow.